Hello and welcome back to Incredible Inverse and Other Animals with me, Phil. Or if it's your first time watching one of my videos, then welcome. As I say, before we get right into the video, I've just got a couple of shout outs to make. First off, to Mark, the spider guy, for sending me not only his stickers, but also the stickers of Peter Webster as well. Do go and check out both of their channels, as well, they're absolutely fantastic. As I'm the nicest people uh, that you might meet on the YouTube community. And then also a big shout out to a friend of mine, Mark, another Mark, for sending me his stickers as well. And um, there's some moves minis you can check out on Instagram, um, where he, he does sort of various Warhammer uh, sort of paintings and stuff. So if you're into the Warhammer models, go and check out Moogs minis on, uh, on Instagram. There's another fellow invert keeper, um, actually one of the probably one of the top invert keepers in Europe um as a zookeeper as well as i've so fantastic guy thank you to all those guys for sending me their stickers my stickers have uh gone out of people the first batch um if you are interested in my stickers do let me know do send me a, a message i will get some out to you as i've still got some left but the, i say the first batch has gone out and it's great seeing people uh posting up pictures of uh the stickers um and great for a whole host of people that have asked me uh, for them, not just uh, from YouTube, uh, but also other zookeepers have asked me. So some went to keep uh, up at Chester Zoo, uh, a few went to guys over at Bristol Zoo, and some, and some went down uh, to keep at Coon Martin Wildlife Park as well, um, which has been fantastic. And also uh, people that have asked me for them um, that I don't know at all, that aren't friends of mine or anything, so that has been amazing. But today's video, we're going to go back to our sort of my introduction series that I've been doing. So in introducing a new species. So this is a species of animal, not an invertebrate. Obviously invertebrates are animals, but another animal uh, that I work with uh, within the zoo I work at. So at Shepherd Wildlife Park. Um, got a couple of cheeky chappies here, which are our large hairy armadillos. So let's go and take a look. Okay, so here we are in the temporary enclosure of our large hairy armadillos or Chaetophractus velosus. I'm currently walking up to where they are sleeping and here they are, two very sleepy armadillos. So these are the two large hairy armadillos that we have at Shepherd Wildlife Park. So I look after these guys and we have two brothers. We have Kinate and Seelu. And as you can see... They're very, very sleepy. So they are nocturnal animals, so that means that they are often out during the night. They sort of become more active towards dusk. Then they'll be active on and off throughout the night, uh, right through till dawn, and then tend to sleep most of the day. And when armadillos sleep, especially these two, they are very, very deep sleepers. Now, uh, in this temporary enclosure, they've actually built themselves a mound of bark, where they've kind of created a little dip at the top of their nest and that's where they sleep so they tend to always sleep huddled together like this so it is a is incredibly cute you have to admit that uh, as you can see they're kind of slowly waking up with me coming in so obviously I go in every day to obviously change their water and uh, give them fresh food as well and just make sure that they're okay when they're awake they can be very very active um almost quite hyper especially uh Silu and run around and cause absolute mayhem and havoc and try and destroy absolutely everything and anything and now in the wild these guys are fairly widespread they're one of the most widespread armadillo species so armadillos as a whole come from the americas and these guys mainly come from south america as they come from regions of bolivia paraguay eastern chile argentina and they found grasslands and forests so uh, so here are these guys now it's really starting to wake up now um, knowing that I'm there <laughs> now they are really good burrowers so they have really strong front claws and legs for burrowing and they can dig a new burrow every day if they want to <laughs> and they'll dig down quite a long way they can even backfill their burrow so predators don't know they're there and that's because they have very special sort of memories on their nostrils a very special respiratory system which means that they can breathe through soil so as long as the soil is not too compacted, 
um, they can actually breathe through the air in between the particles of soil without getting any soil up their nose. Um, so I think that's absolutely remarkable uh, for any animal to be able to do. Now these guys are called the large hairies because they are very very hairy compared to a lot of other armadillos. As you can see here got their back is completely covered in hair. Underneath on their belly it's kind of like a really bad wig. They are extremely hairy. And then the other sort of species that's known as the hairy is the small hairy. Which of course is a lot smaller than these guys. That one's also known as the screaming hairy because uh, if you touch it or pick it up it screams at you. Uh, these guys don't, they don't really make much noise, they have a few vocalisations but really not a huge amount, it's mainly snuffling. So, but of course these are not the largest of the armadillos, the largest is the giant armadillo, so, then the smallest is the pink fairy armadillo. So, so these guys are kind of average size, there's a few species that are bigger than these guys, so, and there's around 20 species of armadillo, I think there's about 23 I think, um, that we currently know of. These guys are what we call least concerned, so there's quite a few of them out in the wild. Um, their numbers are fairly stable. Uh, they do obviously face some problems, habitat destruction like pretty much every animal does. Um, they are poached as well uh, for their meat and also for their bony shell. So the armour plating on them is made of bone. It's dermal bone that sits on top of the skin. So, and that is used for various things. So people do make baskets out of it. Um, and even some people do believe that it's a bit of an aphrodisiac, so they do actually grate the bone. Um, and then there's also medicine trade in Southern America as well, that um, much like what we think of the, the Oriental medicine trade, you get the same in the Americas as well. So where various parts of the animal are believed to cure things like the common cold um, or whatever, and of course there's no science to back this up whatsoever. So why do we have these... Uh, at the zoo, well, these came to us from a another zoo uh, that couldn't really house them anymore, didn't have an enclosure that was quite suitable, and so they then came to us as we had an enclosure spare um, that we could put those in. So we've housed these now for well, quite a few years now. Some of these are starting to go on a bit now. They're kind of uh, in their late teens, and they can live sort of 20, 25 years quite happily within captivity, uh, sometimes longer. So. Um, but they're currently in temporary accommodation in one of our quarantine rooms as we are completely redoing their enclosure at the moment in the tropical house at Shepherd Wildlife Park. Um, we've thought whilst we've been closed during lockdown and we can't legally open that up just yet at the moment, although the rest of you can open, uh, we can't open the indoor areas, we've taken the opportunity to kind of redo things a little bit in there. Um, we also had a bit of a pest insect problem uh, within the building. Um, so we removed these guys as they do eat insects and we don't want them eating the pest ones uh, that we're trying to get rid of. Um, so for their own uh, well-being and so we can, like I say, just redo their enclosure, we've put them in this temporary one. Uh, but they're doing really well, so like I said, they've built up a big mound of bark uh, so that they can nest in. So they've got various toys and stuff so that they can have a bit of play around. We've done a little uh, digging sand pit for them as well because they do love to dig. So, um, as a, yeah, this mound, they've completely done that themselves. So they do seem quite happy in here. And uh, we can certainly monitor their food a lot more as we know then they're not going to be eating any extra insects um, that we're not giving them. Um, so insects do make up quite a bit of their diet, especially in the wild. Um, and then in captivity, uh, we give them various uh, food stuffs, so, and um, we'll show you some of that at the or towards the end of the video. Um, but they are omnivores, so they will eat, I say, things like fruits and uh, and veg, as well as various meat, eggs, um, and then insects. So I say, makes makes up most of their diet. Um, now, here, this is Sea Loop, and this is pretty much his favourite game, is playing tug of war with my trouser leg. <laughs> so, he, he's not my biggest fan, but I absolutely love him. And then Kanate, his brother, loves a belly tickle. They also love getting wet and messing up their water, so I have to change that sometimes a few times a day. And then this is probably currently Sea Loop's favourite toy at the moment. So it's uh, basically a, like a dog ball on uh, a bit of string, essentially. 
and he loves basically trying to kill it. <laughs> and then here we've got a Nate with the food. So here's a bowl of mixed fruit and veg, and as he absolutely loves his banana. <laughs> and hopefully you can hear him just really sort of nomming away at that. Um, they don't have the best table manners, <laughs> has to be said. They're quite messy eaters. So certainly with the next food stuff that I'll show you, which is this stuff, this kind of slop looking thing. This is called Termant, which is a commercially made diet for animals like armadillos, aardvarks, anteaters, all these sorts of animals. Uh, this is technically a complete diet. It comes to us as a powder that we mix with water. As you can see, Kanate here absolutely loves it. And so they get a bowl of this every day, along with fruit and veg, and then occasional eggs and insects as well. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that look at the large, hairy armadillos. They're fantastic animals. I absolutely adore working with these two. Although Silu absolutely hates me. And I love him to bits. And Kanate, again, you just can't help but love Kanate. Um, he's always friendly. He's always friendly. He's friendly with everyone. He loves everyone. And uh, especially he loves a belly tickle now and again as well. Where Silu just wants to rip my trousers apart. And stuff and to bite me. And stuff. So I have to be careful around him. He... Uh, Certainly a lot more uh, sort of highly strong, a bit more kind of angsty and, uh, and aggressive with, with things. But a lot of that is his play as well. Although he's just a bit rougher, whereas uh, can they much more gentle. So, but they, I say they are fantastic animals. So if you did like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. So please do put some comments down below. And if you haven't yet, please do subscribe. Um, I completely missed the amount, so I've gone past the 200 subscriber mark, which is fantastic. Um, thank you everyone who has subscribed so far. Um, and gone over the, the 10,000 views uh, mark as well, which is just amazing. I never expected that I'd uh, get to this point when I first started this channel. So thank you everyone who does watch my videos. Uh, thank you to everyone who does put comments down, uh, puts like, and thank you to everyone who has subscribed. And again, Thank you to Mark the Spider Guy uh, for his and Peter Webster stickers and thank you to my friend Mark for his uh, minis stickers. So again, if you'd like stickers from me, please let me know and I will do what I can to get some sent out to you. So, I'll see you next Sunday. Bye, take care and keep rocking.